this series will contain short videos on the complex analysis topic and will cover everything about the complex analysis especially for BSc students. This is the first video and in this video we will talk about the basics of complex numbers. So you might ask what are complex numbers? So normally complex numbers are represented by Z and they have the form of X plus iota Y. This part is known as real part and this is imaginary part. That this part is something that we imagine only. This do not exist in real world and they combined make a complex number. So now we will ask from where these complex numbers came in. So take a look at this equation x square plus 1 is equal to 0. This only equation is responsible for the whole complex analysis. This simple thing led to this very wide topic which is known as complex analysis. So take a look at this. Now tell me any real number which can solve this equation. For example tell me any value of x which will give 0 for this. So if we put like 1 in here so it gives us 2 which is not equal to 0 so 2 is not a root of this equation also if we put minus 1 again this is not the root of this equation so we don't have any real number there is no number in a real line which can satisfy this equation. So, we need a number. We need a number which will satisfy this equation. So, let's try to satisfy this equation. So, we will have x square is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to root of minus 1. And this thing, this number do not exist in real line there is no uh, root of minus 1 in real line. So, root of minus 1 is known as iota which is behind all this complex analysis topic. So, z is equal to x plus iota y and in every complex number we can replace this real part and imaginary part. The part which will contain iota will be the imaginary part. Why? Because this thing iota is imaginary. There is no iota in real line if y is 0 then z will be x plus iota 0. So we have represented real numbers in form of complex numbers. So real numbers also exist in complex numbers. The real line is this and the complex plane is this. So the real line exists in the complex plane where y is 0. So, the complex plane is really bigger than the real line. There are infinite numbers in complex planes which exist, which do not exist in the real line. So, we were working on the real line till now. But now, due to this iota, we have a new field of mathematics which is complex analysis. So, this equation, this simple equation led to this complex analysis. Now, the next thing you need to learn is the modulus of a complex number. Now, here in a complex number, you can see a x and a y. That means when we are talking about real lines, it's one dimensional. So, to approach a point, you either go from here or here, right? But the complex number is not a one dimensional thing. Like there is not only two ways to approach a point, like a plane. You will learn this pattern when you will see the graphical representation of a complex number. That is the next video. But in this video, you just need to know that it's a plane. So, in a plane, for example, if you want to reach this point, you can go from here, 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 here. So, to approach a single point, there are infinite number of ways in a complex plane. So, in a complex plane, for example, let's see a real line. There is, let's say here is 1 and here is 2. So, you can say that 1 is less than 2 and 2 
is greater than 1 because if you reach from here go from here you get 1 first and 2 later and go from here you get 2 first and 1 later so you can say this but in complex numbers you can't say this because to reach a single point you have infinite number of ways so you cannot say in complex numbers that z1 is greater than z2 you cannot say this in complex number to solve this problem we can't say which number is greater than or less than we take the modulus in the graphical representation you will know what is modulus better but i will just tell you the formula of modulus because it's important to solve simple problems you will need this so, so z is equal to x plus iota y. So, the modulus mod of z is equal to root of x square plus y. So, this simply gives the magnitude. So, from here, you can say that mod of z1 is greater than mod of z2 or vice versa. You can say from here, you can get the magnitude. But from here, you cannot get the magnitude. This simply solves the greater than and less than problem so this simply solves that greater than and less than problem so now in complex numbers you also need to know what is conjugate so what is z star or sometimes z bar what is this this is simply the iota replaced by minus iota z star is equal to x minus iota y or z bar is equal to this is a simply different representation y this complex conjugate is really important because this gives you the square of modulus let's see this z into z star this is really important when you study uncertainty because this gives you the probability also remember this formula that z into z star is equal to x plus iota y multiplied by x minus iota y so now let's solve this x square minus iota y x plus iota y x and this there is a minus sign there will be y square and there is iota square so now you know that iota is root of minus one so iota square will be minus one simply so x square these two cancel out minus y square minus one so x square plus y square so this is the square of modulus of z right so the square of modulus of z is z into z star this is also important so this covers the basics of complex number now you know the origin of complex numbers what is the need of complex numbers so now when we will solve the future problems we will see why this complex analysis is important because sometimes in real world a problem is really difficult but when we convert that real into complex and then solve it becomes really easy so that's why we are so much interested in complex analysis so this is the end of this video thanks for watching this video and always remember that math is everything